So today I'm doing a video with my friend Ian Scott. He's you're a historian, you're an artist, you're um, a pen aficionado. You've been using fountain pens for what? A long time. A long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never stopped. You never stopped. You you were using them when you were a kid because yeah. that's what people at that that you know they were the ball point over. The ball point was coming on as I was in high school. Right. And uh, but I very quickly learned that if you're trying to get you know good marks to get you know uh, bursary scholarship to university, you wanted to try to keep your marks high. And that basically, if you wrote your exams and your essays in fountain pen, you tended to get better marks for some reason. Penmanship. Penmanship. <laughs> and just kept going through right. the university. I always liked them and. Uh, yeah. And I and I think of you as the person to talk to about Parker Fifty One because you have a long history with the Parker Fifty One. You had them when you, you were in high school, probably. I did, and uh, it's a really really interesting pen. Mm -hmm. um, so it uh, and a big big history. Yeah, it was really uh, if any pen kind of stands out as the collectible Parker um, Parker Fifty One is that right. Really. And it's before that design of pens was completely different. Like there were a lot of uh, celluloid, colorful pen bodies, and they had the Parker Vacuumatic before. They did. So the Vacuumatic was, uh, they were always trying to deal with the issues of the leaky pen, mm -hmm. the blotting pen that would come out with a big splotch. splotch right. And, uh, uh, blotters had been a big part of the culture. So every desk had a, blotter it had corners on it and you would change first of all you flip the blotter paper over so you get a fresh side so you get two sides out of a blotter paper but you would eventually get another blotter from your stationary supply house and um, you know eventually those kind of desk blotters ended up with plastic over them and people just stuck cards in the corners um, right uh, yeah. they still exist but yeah you can still buy them at staples right yeah, yeah. but also too Ink drying out on the nib was a problem. Big problem. Right. So creating an ink and a feed system. So basically all pens work on the capillary system mm -hmm. in which a fine tube has a way of liquids adhering to it. Right. And um, whether that's uh, totally water-based uh, or whether it has something to help it dry, isopropyl alcohol became the, the uh the medium of getting a faster dry as i understand it but also altering the alkal alkalinity and acidity was a big factor for fast drying so they wanted a uh, penetration of the paper without too rapid evaporation because if the evaporation is too rapid it dries up the pen right before the ink can actually get out right so they came up with this system uh, they came up with an ink at the same time, which is... Uh, Quink. Quink, yeah. The famous Quink brand. Is this an original bottle? I'm not sure the exact date on it. Um, it looks it's really interesting. It's definitely um, And uh, Parker Quink, permanent blue-black. Four ounces. And that's, yeah. This and is I, a little, uh, little... Later. Later. Um... I can't give you the years on any of these. The packaging also changed a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's always changing. Always yeah. changing, yeah. And this is the classic. This is the one I think of as the classic one for some reason, which makes me wonder how old this is. Yeah, yeah. 750. <laughs> that was from an antique store. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, is that? Store. Did you put ink in it, or was there ink in it, it when you got it? It came fully full with ink. And is this the ink that came in it? Yes. So you haven't used it really? No. I actually it came full and oh. I have used it. Oh, okay. yeah, it's yeah, down it's, about a quarter, a third. Yeah, yeah. I decided to try it and just see how whether it was different, yeah. different tones. Uh, but blue black has been a, a popular Parker. They also had a blue and a black. They have a washable blue. Yeah, I don't right. know a lot about that. I don't know much about that either. I just mm. heard of it and I don't. Yeah. I, I haven't tried it, but yeah. So this is the classic. Parker 51 setup right here almost. It is. In the box. Comes with the co uh, with a box. So the clamshell. Yeah. Clam and shell. it says 51 on the top. Right on it. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and when this came out in 41? Yeah, the really 39 was the year that they developed the ink. 
and um, so they had. Uh, it was really. A, it's a company that goes back to 1888. Right. George Parker started it, and then his son Kenneth, and then Daniel was the grandson. One of those family companies in which you put the family name on it, and generations after generations follow. Ford. Chrysler. Exactly, Ford Chrysler, your department stores in Eaton's. small towns, yeah. you know, you <laughs> knew the people that owned them, you knew who their father was, their yeah. grandfather. And uh, most pen companies were like that, like you think Schaefer and... Schaefer's another one, yeah. Esterbrook? Yeah. Esterbrook must have been a family name. Yeah. That's a, yeah. yeah. I think Waterman, yeah, Waterman Water? was a family name Yeah, well. so, yeah. Nowadays, we come up with brands like Twisby, whatever yes. that means. <laughs> yeah, 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 not the family name. Right? Or Lamy's actually a family well, name. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, that's I the family know. name. Yeah, okay. so. yeah, yeah, so in that, uh, Parker is attributed as really the first of those that made it to the global brand, or they, they were the out in front. Hmm. And got to be a global brand before the others. Yeah, Schaefer, you know, was basically nipping at their heels. But yeah. um, and there were, we think of those brands, but there are so many that are almost forgotten. That you know, smaller sub brands, you know, like uh, uh, wherever and uh, there's like Moore and Arnold and there's all these other little pen companies that yeah. disappeared. And Parker was the one that you know carried on they probably bought out many of the companies or just drove them out of business <laughs> yeah or stole their <laughs> or they went broke in the depression are, like yeah. like every uh, every business you know Patents. but it seemed like like yeah so parker like you say is one of the major worldwide brands because uh at the time and, at the time yeah yeah and, as and, a... and in some ways still is it's still in the collector's market it's one of the more sought after names if you're looking at vintage in vintage pens and in the um they've ended up sort of in the luxury side i mean they did try through the 1950s to 70s to with the uh, parker jotter yeah in which they brought out they realized that the ballpoint pen was going to yeah and they still yeah. make the jotter and it's like a 20 dollars pen and it's a good pen for all you know yeah but you don't really think of it some ways. Yeah. And when they brought that out, they, they did go with trying to create a superior product so that you could, a 400 pound person, 400 pound man could stand on this pen without breaking it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, too many it, pens you can do that with. Yeah. And, you know, that's still a selling point today because there's still pens that, that brag about the fact that they're almost indestructible. The Y Studio. Uh, pen you can drive a car over it and it won't damage yeah. it yeah so so you could stand a 450 pound man could stand on a parker 51 no, i don't know if a parker 51 but it's the jotter on and the jotter, the jotter right? okay okay well it's a metal pen a metal yeah and very mm. durable and with a high capacity yeah at the time when um refillable uh, refills were you know would be running out Right. So you would be able to have a refill that was at least, you know, three times to three and a half times the capacity. Yeah, um, yeah back to the 51. Can I take this out? Sure. So this one here, is this one of your originals or did you find this later in this life? This is a family one that came to me. That came to you? Yeah. It's a and nice I'd say one. that's what, a rolled gold cap or a gold filled? Gold filled. Gold filled. Gold filled. And it yeah. says Parker, I'm thinking. Yeah, Parker. And the, the classic, often copied Parker clip, right? Yes. So like it shows up in so many, like, non Parker pens. Let's just do some variations. So there, there's a, another 51. That's another 51. Slightly okay. different on the arrow. Yeah. But you can see how this starts to evolve and change a little bit. So they, um, this is another, let me make sure I get it right here. And these are uh, piston fillers, are they? Is that? Aero, yeah, these are pistons. These are the piston ones. This right. is the aerometric. That's the aerometric. So the, just look at the arrow, how the arrow starts. The arrow is off. longer. Actually, the arrow is a bit more like this gold-filled one in some ways. Yeah. yeah. So this is the 21, which is um, a, uh, cheaper a cheaper like version. cheaper Like it was designed for almost... Uh, for the yeah, mid-market. The mid-market, yeah. So Parker 50 came out, 51 came out as a very expensive pen. It was mm. $12.50 at a time when... Uh, it was in the, well, it came out in um, that 31 uh, period. Um, no, it, the ink came out in 31. It was mm -hmm. the, uh, the pen that came out in 41. Right. But it was in 39. Right. 1939, they developed it. 1250 
at that time is a factor of 20 now. So that's a $250 pen. Right, for the common today. market, yeah. So that's not your, your average person that's looking for something yeah. to... Um, and at the time, like we were talking earlier, like on Prince Edward Island, for instance, even professionals were being paid in chickens. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could be a doctor in the countryside Cancer and somebody would pay you... Chickens or bags Cash of was rare, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so, like, like really, like uh, looking through old ledgers of Dr. Roddy, who's a famous doctor on yeah. PEI, uh, what's McDonald's? What's his last name? Roddy McDonald's. Roddy McDonald's up in St. Peter's Bay. You look through his office ledger, he was paid in potatoes and chickens, and cash was rare yeah. in back in the 30s and 40s in PEI, yeah. even into the 50s, really. Yeah. 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 That's why so many people left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and a mechanic might be making $5 a week. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the dollar a day yeah. labor, yeah. you know, skilled uh, trades would maybe be doing better, but a, a dollar a day for farm labor or for uh, construction labor was, you know, for, it was common. for a yeah. long time. So a $200 pen in in today's currency is, is yeah actually even more when you think about it. <laughs> yes. So they, they were bringing out a superior quality pen, which became popular. But uh, the reality is they were in the mid-market as well. So mm -hmm. you've got uh, people working in offices, students. Um, you know, it's nice to get a graduation gift at the end of uh, schooling as pens. And pen sets have been a, a graduation gift for, uh, right. for many years. This is a 45, and the clip this is quite is similar 45. to... So, yeah. Yeah. So the so 45 came later. Those, the, That's 21. So, so this starts as a 51. Right. The similar clip. Right. This is a 51 with the, the change, slight change. Longer. Longer. Now, this has become highly stylized. Very so simple, but it's very more simple. stamped. On. Stamped It's in. a fairly simple piece of metal. And, yeah, just in, stamped. Like, And they didn't even stamp the the barrel, just the arrowhead and the feathers. Yeah. Hmm. But and the 45 the, is very similar. It's simpler. Yeah. Right. Than, and the most stylized is, uh, is quite a bit later, but... Um, in the Targa era, era. I'm not sure if that right. is a Targa. Very interesting. But it's very interesting, yeah, because yeah. it's it's reversed. The most clips are not high, not a lot of spring to them. Right. And this one actually does have a yeah, yeah, spring very, release. Very springy. And um, this is very elaborate. And there is the famous little blue diamond. The blue diamond. On that. Which, what did the blue diamond mean? Hmm. You know, I have not really researched that, but like, it, it was their a premium mark. Of right, some because sort. like Schaefer had the white dot for their yes. high end uh, lifetime warranties, right? Yeah, or supposedly so the, white lifetime the, the white warranty. dot and right. sig mm -hmm. signified the lifetime warranty. Parker also had a lifetime warranty at one point. I wonder if the blue diamond. I, if yeah. anybody in the anybody watching knows. Tell me in the comments. People always it. give me information in the comments. It's what, great. What the blue but uh, yeah, I'm just seeing the blue diamond there and. I've heard of it, and I probably knew what it meant at one point, but I've forgotten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting to see that. And that is a very, you know, it's a smaller um, it is. arrow. Yeah, and it goes back to the vacuumatic. And it says Parker. So the vacuumatic, just to give you a comparison for... Uh, that's the classic, classic Parker vacuumatic, and the arrow clips are very similar. Yeah. Now... And interesting, at the vacuumatic stage, this was a screw cap. With a vent hole in it, an air vent, right. which is quite different. I, we never get a, an air vent because you're trying to keep air from drying out the ink. Right. Um, but Parker, you know, with their uh, their effort to bring back the uh, the newer version what, last year, they did revert to, to an air hole. To well, the arrow is again extremely stylized. Right. It's it's, not, uh, it's more stamped. It's more it's like more the twenty one in some ways. In many ways. Yeah, you've got just a bit it? of stamping for the feathering, and the arrowhead is has no line on it. Right. But they have gone back to a, a screw-on cap, yeah. where for many years it has always been a... And one of the selling trip. points of the original 51 is the simplicity of the pull cap. You can pull it, you pull a cap right. off, you can yeah. write with it. It's not going to dry up because of the hooded nib right? and the specialized inks. That was the whole point of the pen, wasn't it? It's, Simplicity and ease. Simplicity and ease. And yeah, the, and, the idea and, of, a, of a pen on a desk in which you're cap on, cap off repeatedly through the day. You mm -hmm. don't just uncap it in the morning and recap it at the end of the day. Right. You're, you're recapping it 
off and on, like off always, on. right? So that's mm -hmm. why the uh, it just uh, slip on, and uh, a system that would allow it to um, to fit without producing a lot of scratches, and also durability because as you're using threads, they wear. They wear. And a pull and, cap usually has a clutch ring. Yeah. And that doesn't wear as rapidly. So it's probably in many ways going to last longer. And these hard plastics that they're using, I mean, we're calling them plastics. They're really resin-based. Yeah, and, uh, this would be more of a celluloid. Celluloid, it is. So it's built up with layers right. and then turned on a lathe. And celluloid yeah. was highly flammable and dangerous in a, in a manufacturing process because, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, you're, you're, if you're, if you're turning celluloid on a lathe and you have all the friction filaments piling up, people smoking on the job, yeah. <laughs> you could potentially have a disaster on your hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whereas it's... going to say resin, is plastics and resins. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and so this is like a big design change, change. from the vacuum attic. It was a big step. And yeah. All of a sudden, this thing is simpler, but it's also futuristic looking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you talk about the threads, I'm reminded of this. So this is the, no, this is the 51. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is one of my school pans. So I don't know if that's in focus or not. But, uh, so I had some of these rebuilt. But just to give you an idea of mm -hmm. what they ended up in the, uh, in the 1960s, uh, this was made in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it's a narrow metric. Fill. Yeah. So you squeeze you that. You squeeze the bar in. Yeah, and that so actually is still times. used. Yes, highly. Pilot Metropolitan has that. Yeah, filler. highly effective yeah. technique. And, and you can replace the replaceable the sack. Yeah. So this idea of having to send your things away. I mean, I've sent up things away to Parker to Schaefer over the years, and mm. now I deal with somebody in California that just specializes in fifty ones. The company you told me about was called. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, Parker fifty one dot com. Is Parker fifty one dot com? Right, the, and I've seen the website and I've heard other people that have, have used them and they, and they do good restoration work. Really good. They also sell part of the yeah. yeah. So there is a market for restored as well as there's, um, yeah. the ones that are, yeah. um, haven't been, uh, uh worked on. But, but also I, I would say there's a certain, like I know as a, an eBay buyer, I'm often, Anytime I see it, what I think of as a real Parker 51, I can't really get involved because it turns into a bidding war. And then you see stuff, Parker 51 from China, and I'm like, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not is it like, so there's a lot of reproductions and fakes and there is. floating around. So, yeah. It, yeah. So yeah. if you're buying from somebody who's a reputable company, you're going to get the real deal. Exactly. Right? So yeah. that's always appealing. Yeah. So when this period, in which they were trying to get the same technology. Um, but you can see this has got a scratch on it. Mm -hmm. This is a softer plastic. Softer plastic. And is that the 21 or? Uh, this is the 21. Yeah, 21 was a, yeah. I, 21 does have issues with scratching and cracking. Apparently, like, like I've seen a lot of 21s where there there's cracks up around the, 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 the tip yeah. and things like that. So it's a, a lighter plastic. A lighter plastic and mm -hmm. slightly softer. So some of these... Because they're going for a, a different market. They're going for a different market. So they're basically trying to bring out a pen that is almost at the school pen level. Right. It's not a blister pack that comes right. with a couple of uh, cartridges yet. And um, I collect school pens. I, 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 I have a pens. few... What? Great little pens. The great thing is, well, you think school pen, you automatically think bad pen. But No. If a kid is in school, they don't want a scratchy pen, right? If it's yeah. a, if it's if it's a poorly working pen, it's <laughs> you know they're they're not going to use it. Yeah. So you can often find, you know, what would be referred to as a school pen, and it's usually copying the major brands or the higher end pen, but and it just has slightly lower plastics or resins or, but it's still a great writer. Yeah. Yeah. And has the variations that you can get a fine or, or a medium. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, we talk about penmanship and trying to impress the teacher. Oh. You know, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you want a pen that, uh, that you're comfortable with. Yeah. And um, and I grew up using ballpoints and stuff like that in school. We didn't use fountain pens. 
but they still sort of penmanship was still I'm going to say beat into us, yeah. <laughs> but it not was quite. It wasn't it was quite beat into us. Yeah. But I remember what, like I had a teacher that would prowl the, the aisles as you were practicing your letters. Yeah. And if you, if you weren't careful, and if you were sloppy, the, the ruler could come slapping down on the table right next to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd jump. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the, the, my, 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 uh, my story was she was probably 20 years or 10 years earlier slapping the knuckles of somebody and then no no longer allowed to when i was a kid no, but yeah. desperately wanted the auditory to. Yeah. <laughs> punishment yeah the thump yeah the thump yeah and, but yes we've practiced whereas my kids today they, they 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 don't really go into it as much as they they used to like yeah. penmanship it's not important uh, as it is and which is a shame but i remember like the mclean method being yeah the, with the, uh, prince edward island uh, Founder. I mean, he was hmm. his career took him to uh, to BC, but uh, yeah. his uh, technique went um, pretty much uh, major Commonwealth uh, yeah. countries, yeah. right so, across Canada for sure. They made this from 1941 to 19. Really, 72 is the year I kind of look at as the, the cutoff. Uh, so it goes from the vacuumatic in the early years mm -hmm. uh, to the aerometric, and uh, and the next one they did was the 45. Yeah, they, but that overlaps though, right, with the fifty-one. Um, yeah. So the the twenty-one is uh, sort of coexistent, if you will, uh, using the same technology, a different name. Mm -hmm. And Parker was being strategic around the naming. And it's interesting when you mentioned the forty-five, which was named after the Colt forty-five. Right. But yeah. they very early realized they were an international company, and that if they just called it, let's say the um, Parker, and Parker Arrow. Arrow, yeah. It, yeah. it uh, doesn't you translate. Have, you right. It doesn't translate, and they needed something that was translatable. So numbers uh, work in every country. Mm -hmm. uh, people just use the appropriate language. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you would see forty-five, and if you're speaking German, you just yeah, or French, you would see the forty-five, so, and it just you'd know you'd know right. What it was. So there was three reasons for the name. It was the 51st anniversary of the company when they developed it. So they, it took years, but, uh, and a quarter of a million dollars um, at that time. But so it was named for the, um, but came out, named for the anniversary, but came out in year 41. So it had a futuristic quality yeah. in the same way, like George Orwell's, you know, 19... 84 had a futuristic quality for for uh, the decades of the uh, that when it came out. Um, and or, you know the funny thing you're saying 1941, right? When you think of all the men going overseas, so this pen would have gone everywhere, like quite rapidly. Like yes, it would have. Um, like, it would have been used. Uh, officers, officers or yeah. would have had them so that like it quickly would have gone. To countries maybe that didn't have the the parker pens yeah and then because i know that like for instance i have uh an italian pen the aurora 88 which is that came out in the 50s after yeah. the world war actually probably started being designed shortly after world war ii and it's directly copied off the 51. yeah, yeah. so these pens were definitely available and designers uh of course would be well aware of where the market was the other features that they were going for besides um, a name that was easily translatable, was that they were, um, as these um, uh, air travel started to become more popular, or the idea of air travel, even if right. you weren't traveling, the idea that you uh, uh, had a pen that could withstand the, uh, the change in pressure. Your, yes. In the, uh, even today, some people still are a lot, well, reasonably so worried about getting on a plane with I, a fountain pen yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had uh, uh rollerball pins that have uh you know have leaked like crazy yeah uh, just and you know there's not that much uh air pressure change in an airplane these days but the pens can be quite sensitive yeah. and that was the concern that you walk off the paint plane with uh, an ink stain on your shirt pocket right not a great way to impress people that you're going to be doing business yeah. with but it was yeah. be a very common problem it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Having ink stains. And as a fountain pen user, I'm still 
covered in ink half the time. Hey. <laughs> Usually when I'm hands. changing inks. Yeah, yeah. So washable ink. Uh, washable inks. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when I look at the design changes, like, um, you know, the 45 is similar in some ways, but it's very sleek, right? It, compared to the classic, what we call the classic cigar shape of the yeah. 51. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, um, the 45. So the other thing that happened with the 45 is there were, you were really into sets by then. Uh, and th because it was um, uh, cohabiting the, the shelves with the uh, the jotter. Right. Uh, so the jotter became the third part of the set. You had a three-part oh. set now. Right. So Would that you, be the jotter? As a ballpoint pen. As a ballpoint pen. pen with the pencil. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the mechanical pencil and the pen as a set. Right, the fountain pen with the case, case. Right. Uh, became a big part of the market. And, It'd almost uh, be like a gift set. A gift set. Right. And uh, the uh, so then you basically had a third product to sell, so you could, um, you know, show that you had a, a ballpoint pen uh, for certain things. So if you wanted to address envelopes with a ballpoint pen, sign checks with a right. fountain pen, um, whatever you were comfortable with, you picked up. A pencil was great for updating calendars that needed to be uh, right. changed, easily erased. The um, the little pencil that came with this, uh, or I uh, was able to, from another collector, uh, was able to get this. It's not an exact match, I don't think, but very close. Pretty close, isn't it? Yeah, I was quite pleased to get that. Um, and uh, there's good camaraderie among the um, pen community. That There's people... a nice grip section on that. Yes, a nice grip section. <laughs> and the nice thing, uh, fine line um, leads were what were used, mm -hmm. which were a thinner lead than had become the standard of most mechanical pencils, which is about a, in metric, it's a 1.1 millimeter. Right. And the replacement lead for this is um, uh, a 0.9. Oh, the point nine. Yeah. Okay. So these are readily available. Yeah, the point yeah, nines are manufactured, and mm -hmm. they're actually one of the. I find it uh, one of the nicest leads to work with because it doesn't. So snap. that takes a point nine. Yeah, the point uh, zero point five uh, has been the uh, sort of the standard for a lot of uh, yeah. mechanical pencils, but they snap so easily. Yeah, you still. I think it's probably one of the more common sizes more common. today. Yeah. 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 And yes, that is a problem. Yeah. yeah. So that's I've I've actually found this point nine as my favorite um, mm -hmm. uh, pencil. I have a, a number of uh, pencils, but anyway, it is nice to have them as yeah. a set. Now, yeah. we were talking earlier about the classic fifty ones, and everybody knows about the new reissue. Yeah. And we were talking about it, and I don't know if we were being nice about it. <laughs> I sometimes am not nice about the 50. I don't have a 50, a 51. I don't have a, the modern one, yeah. but uh, you have one here, right? Yeah, I do. And it's, it's interesting when, um, when I look at it, it's very similar, but there's a lot of differences. It's, you can see the similar shape. The, the clip though is a lot more primitive or simple. So it is the stylized yeah. clip. Whereas these are very elaborate. There's a lot of care, a lot of craftsmanship in some of the nibs, uh, uh, the clips on the older ones. Yeah. Whereas this is almost stamped, right? Whereas. Uh, yeah. You know. So they're getting more of the stylized, uh, less of the detailed arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really uh, sort of a tribute to the um, to the brand. Right. And of course, all of the copycats uh, pins. Um, that are made to to look like the Parker Fifty One, um, you know, do have that the arrow, the top yeah. of the arrow. I, yeah. Like I have a couple brands at home, uh, a Wing Sung, and I have a a French, uh, an Italian pen, a, a, a Viz Pen Autovac, and they all have the, the arrow clip on them, which often made me wonder how how they got away with it without being sued. I guess it'd be. There'd be so many of them, it would almost be pointless to try to sue them at the time. <laughs> so many copies of the arrow yeah. clip. Yeah. But it was off, ob obviously being done to confuse people in some way. Or to, you know, 
not necessarily confuse people, but if you casually pull one out, people might think you have a Parker 51 and you're a real one, you know, yeah, where it's yeah. where it's not really, yeah. <laughs> you know, we all want to appear a bit more sophisticated than we are or, or whatever. And the thing about this, it has a screw cap, whereas the it original, does. and it I does. know from my own experience on my channel, if you mention which do you prefer, screw cap or pull cap, boy, can you start a conversation with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> which do you prefer, pull cap or screw cap? Yeah. There, and there's like, nobody's in between. I think it's like you, people love the pull cap or they hate the pull cap or they love the screw cap or they hate the screw cap. Yeah. But and, this yeah, has a screw cap, yeah. which is kind of an interesting choice if they're trying to make a reproduction to completely change the cap. You, know, you would think it, it is. It's quite a Because it actually has what could have been a clutch ring. Could have been. This is almost pointless in some ways, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, it, and it's plastic on metal, right? That's metal threads, and this is plastic. Yeah. Which is interesting, you know? It is. And I think, you know, possibly the designer felt that, um, you know, uh, it's a not... large portion of the market wants that tight, secure sense that the cap is on, and mm -hmm. if I carry this, to a meeting, I'm not going to have the cap falling off in my pocket, in my briefcase, right. in the purse. Um, so it provides the, a sense of security. False um, security, I would say. Pardon? I, I, I call it false security. Yeah. Because, you know, like a full cap, if it has a good clutch ring, is, is very solid, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I think... The uh, the sense of the designer is that the market today, mm. a person is using a fountain pen as one of a number of writing instruments. The reality yeah. is the primary writing mm. instrument is probably a computer of some sort. Yes, and the um, big and another big difference is the nibs. The nibs. This the is nibs. almost like a tubular nib, and I have taken some of these apart. Or actually, I've taken. Um, one thing about this, there's a breather tube when you take it all apart. There's the section, the yeah. feed, and there's a breather tube that comes down right into through. your yeah. filling or your sack. Yeah. And that's actually still, if you take a wing sung apart, it's, it still it's has the same breather. tube. It has the tube. Yeah. And I don't think this does because it has quite a different nib and it looks almost like a jotter nib in some ways. Yeah. I've not seen it taken apart mm. uh, or the diagrams. I, um, interesting. Mm. Yeah, so it's interesting from that point, you know, what happens. But anyway, so there we have it. Yeah. The Parker 51.